My name is Intent Raven. Alright, good luck. Make your argument. We have to go sword, kitchen knife set. Okay. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword based sneak attack. Okay. And that's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. Yes. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. Okay. Exactly what happened. I don't think so. Okay. Fighting broke out. Because grab the sword. It doesn't explain the sheath. When the first blow was a sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss My Zone. They would have had to know this always at the begin with. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her and killed her. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Fighting broke out. Because the sheath would have been still in the case then. If that was what happened, the sheath would have still been in the case. Actually, no. That makes more. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. Yeah. See, there's a gash in it, like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp. Yeah. The knife? No. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. Fair point, Mono. The sword was used first. There wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheet. There you go. If going to attack with the sword, you take it out of the sheet first, right? That's true. Exactly. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. True. Okay, so how did the sheet get damaged? Also, oh, long. Sorry for the long episode. With the kitchen knife. Maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In yes. Situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. Yes. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife. Yes. Means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Yes. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife. No. Somewhere. God, you're so idiot. You're so dumb, Taka. And attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit. No, that doesn't make sense logically. If she had taken the knife and hidden it, with the sword, they took the knife and the killer wouldn't have had to find it. But I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. She didn't. How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. She never used a sword. If you wanted to use a sword, which part of the body would you have to touch? Her palms. And because her palms didn't have the gold on it. Right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. She didn't. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Because the gold would have stuck. Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. Yeah. If you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's yep. really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Yep. Maybe she washed her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. Yeah, some dude's gonna kill you. And you're gonna wash your hands? No. You say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No. That's not it at all. Freak. There's a certain regulation that talks about the water was off. I got it. The water gets turned off. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. Yes. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower. What? Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. It's an insult, idiot. Obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, 
And that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. Yes. Hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was the one who damaged the sheath would have been the one without the sword, which makes it Sayaka. Not only does that make it Sayaka, it also means that Sayaka had the plan to kill someone. Kill whoever she sent the note, Leon. But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Yes. The one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now yes. You she wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She did. She yep. The knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's yep. true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Yep. That brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yes. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that was the frame may on you. That is a possibility. Yep. Sayaka wanted to on me? Yep. She wanted to pin it down on me. She would switch the name. Yep. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Nakuto's room. Shit. Where she was and by committing <laughs> the murder there instead of her room, that would implicate Nakuto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If yeah. the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? Yes. Doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I did. None of you believed me. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? I won't take that personally. Then, you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy yeah. Shit. But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must yeah. be when the wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one. That's exactly what happened. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because 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 you got a hot on for You guys have totally derailed. Argument. You're being super boring right now. Come on. Oh God. And decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, Fuck you, Monokuma. We gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. You have the answer. Just say it. Murdered Sayaka. It's over for all of us. Is is it really all over? Obviously, I'm I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as the clues goes, there's nothing left. Not true. The numbers. It's easy just to say, "Hey, decide who did it," but there just aren't any more clues, right? No. Dying message. There's one last clue. There still might be one clue left. Yep. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? She did. One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question that Sayaka wrote it. Um, left index finger. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. Bingo. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. Yep. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? It's 
not numbers. One, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer. <laughs> kind of she decides halfway through. It's not even worth trying to correct you. <laughs> it's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... A look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two... One one look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Yeah, look at this smear, the diagonal line. Right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Yep. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. Mondo, I love him. Oh fuck you, Hifume. It really is an N. N037 doesn't make any more sense than before. I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Yep. Oh god. Now I see. Huh? You just shot past the clue card and right onto who did it. Yes, we did. Keep up. Leon did it. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. Yep. What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. Dude. A bunch of random squiggles that, that is the weakest. Like logic, Shen, you could have put no, together, bro. It's not random at all. It's the dying message of a girl. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In yep. That position, she couldn't move to write normally <laughs> and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. I like that. The game's like, hey, do it yourself. Try it out. That, that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Boom. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Yep. The evidence Leon tried to get rid of. That would be the shit. I love it, so anime. The burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. Yep. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. Yep. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the yep. killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't yep. right, Leon? We got him. We got him dead to rights too. Scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button. She's right. Chihiro is. That's right. A lot of the other people. People here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. If there are, are you finally the crystal ball. The answers to all the riddles of yeah. Which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about the way how it was disposed of. Because only Hafume had it open. How the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure It was thrown in. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. You'd need the key to get in. And the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So True. the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> yeah, but no. Glad to see you with us, Hifu Man. Glad to see you with us. 
there was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty, and that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. The crystal ball. Oh god. Hope you're not dizzy. Because it was 30 feet across. Except no. No. And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy No. No, You don't have to. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without what about the it, trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator. Could also you? wrong. If you use this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But, how would you use it? Had to throw the... Had to throw it. I got it! Like a baseball. The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Yep. I threw that... Threw a gap in the gate? Yeah. You said before, Hifumi? Someone turned it on, baby. Blah, 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 blah. We've been through this before. We already saw that. I'm not going to go through it again. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they Boom. got the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is a death sentence. To know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken yep. care of much more. Would have been an easy fix, but it wasn't. Just hold on. But the yeah. distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least. 30 feet, right? The same amount of distance between the pitcher's mound and home base. Accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that? That's right. There's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... Our verdict? Is the ultimate baseball star. Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right? Leo, do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer. This goddamn ship. Dude, he's going to get voted off the island. <laughs> still won't admit it. Go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all yep. the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Am I gonna have to do this? Alright, uh, the closing argument is about to begin. Yep. Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. And this phrase you will give a complete summary of the case. You have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you notice that in the comic there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a mission, m mission, mission, a missing section and press the X button, holy cow, you get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun. <laughs> Begin! Okay. Hold on. I remember the scene of the crime, the incident when the killer entered. Boom. First when Sayaka attacked the killer with a knife, they noticed something in my room. They notice that
They use that object. Okay. Boom. Right? Is that my doing that right? After the killer counts his attack as attack with an attack of their own, what do they do next? Um. Wait. Okay, they blocked. Had the sheath on. Attacked Sayaka. Um. She was on the wall. Okay, that's the cleanup. Uh, she had to have ridden it then, right? Oh, what is this? Okay. I think we're doing this right. To leave the note behind. Man, it reads like just like a manga. I love it. Okay. Boom. Boom boom. Notices that. Blocks that. Whips that. Boom. He gets hit. Knife. Da -da -da -da. She locks herself in. Well not locks herself. Close it all in. Use the thing. Use behind the notes. Boom! Dead Sayaka. Okay. That's when cleanup crew happened. Then we had to go over here. Notice it was gone. There's this. Moving over here. Oh shit. Oh, right there. Think that's good. Hope that's good. You. I think I better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Okay. Oh, I like this. This is cool. The killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. Yes. Recap it. Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Yes. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. Just as she had told me to hold on to it. A strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. Yep. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Yep. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. Look at this story time. It's an actual story time and within our story time. It's an actual story time in our story time. This is amazing. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily. And there was a trick to opening it. Yep. I knew about that because I told her. But of course, the killer had no way of knowing. Naturally. That's when Jad the forced it open. The door open. Took the kitchen knife. And stabbed Sayaka. Which I'm not quite sure why, like, Sayaka actually had to die, though. Left a dying message. That's the thing I'm confused about. Why did Sayaka have to die? She wrote it on the wall behind her. You know? All her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. Naturally. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Yep. Oh, that's what that was. I couldn't tell. 
they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the oh. entire area. Moms are janked up. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they ever been there. Yep. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried yep. to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate. By the gate. You could have just said the gate. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gate. Yep. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. Yep. Your time is what condemned you. Crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator. Which then quickly roared to life. Why do you have to have the dramatic reenactment, dude? Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, yep. they left the area with I imagine. But there was one thing they missed. The shirt didn't do perfectly. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. The killer didn't notice this. Yep. So left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Well, I'm not quite sure you could say indisputable. Nice! 